Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sarah Chung Podcast. Just kidding. I got a new mic, though. Pat McGrath. Finally come up with concealers. For those who don't know, Pat McGrath is an iconic makeup artist. She does a lot of runway looks on people like Naomi Campbell, Bella Hadid. She's such an amazing makeup artist. And one of my first videos on this channel is a review of her skin fetish highlight. And that was before Pat McGrath was being sold at Sephora. That was when she was still doing the all black packaging. And I've always really loved her face products. So I'm so excited to test this out. So I partnered with Auntie Pat herself to demo the concealer system. And I was lucky enough that she sent this to me before the launch. So I have already been testing it out, but I've never actually done a full face of Pat McGrath face products. So I've never paired this with the Pat McGrath foundation. So we're gonna try that out today. It's probably gonna be the most expensive foundation routine I've ever done. We're fancy, we're expensive now. From what I'm seeing on the website, this has 36 shades. It's lightweight, it's creamy, it's full coverage and has a radiant matte finish. So I'm gonna start with the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. And I'm gonna apply this with her brush too. I haven't been using this primer too, too much just because I love the Milani Prime and Protect Primer. And that's just always my go-to because I want sun protection in my primers. But I feel like Pat McGrath's product isn't really for, like she's not trying to be glossier. It's not for the everyday woman. It's for the Naomi Campbells of the world, you know? But this is a very hydrating and smoothing primer. Next, y'all thought I was gonna put on foundation and I'm actually gonna apply powder first, which is something I know Jackie Aina does a lot on her channel. And I always thought that was an oily skin privilege because I have dry skin and powder on top of primer under foundation. It sounded like a mess to me until TikTok came along and that was my final push and I've been loving it ever since. Next is foundation. Now, I don't even remember the last time I used a foundation brush to blend my foundation instead of a sponge. Now this shade is a little bit too yellow for my face, but I feel like it's a perfect match for my body. This is really the most beautiful foundation packaging. This does contain alcohol though, and y'all know how I feel about that. So from a skincare perspective, that's not the best, but alcohol is also a very common ingredient when it comes to stage makeup, runway makeup. Again, this is not for the everyday girl. For the concealer, I'm a light medium eight. This is actually real glass. Surprisingly, I haven't broken it yet, even though I've dropped it like five times. I'm just gonna dot this under my eyes. Now, the reason why I keep going back to this is because it's such a lightweight but very heavy duty concealer. It's almost like the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, but creamier and higher coverage. So doing that Instagram upside down triangle technique under your eyes with this is not going to work because it's just so intense. It covers everything. I actually tried concealing my tattoo with this and it takes about two or three layers, but it does the job. I'm using the brush from the concealer system. Before I even read the description of this concealer online, my first impression was this feels like my finger. And that's my favorite way to blend out spot concealers because it's so dense that it doesn't pick up that much product, which would sheer out the coverage. So if you're someone who spot conceals a lot, I feel like this is the perfect brush for spot concealing. Just gonna do a couple more dots on my forehead. Now I'm going to powder a little bit on top just to set it, but I want you to see the finish of the foundation and concealer. It's not dewy, but it's not super matte either. Like you can still see a little bit of glow on my cheeks. I would still want to powder around the nose just because that's where I tend to get a little oily, but it just looks like your skin. I'm just going to set my forehead slightly. Lastly, I'm using the Blurring Under Eye Powder, which comes in light, medium, and deep. And I find myself alternating between the medium and light because this one looks so natural, it just blurs my under eyes. Whereas this gives me a little bit more of a pop because it's so much lighter, but we're gonna be dramatic today. I don't know if they have this in stock at Sephora, but even just touching this, you can feel how smooth the powder is. I'm just taking a little bit of this and smoothing this over. You see this? It's subtle, but I feel like it lifts my whole face. This is an under eye powder, but I also like to put a little bit right between my brows just to lift the center of my face a little bit more. So that is the foundation routine. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my face makeup and give you all my final thoughts. Okay, so this is what it looks like with bronzer, blush, and everything else. I think this would be a foundation that's best for people with normal to oily skin. I think this concealer is definitely worth checking out. It's definitely at the same tier as Tarte Shape Tape and NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. But yeah, let me know if you wanna see more foundation reviews, demos, that kind of stuff. Like I said, I've never actually worn the foundation and concealer together and I always thought they were really different. The foundation is light to medium coverage and the concealer is just extremely high coverage. But now that I tried it together, I kind of see why she did it that way so that you can even out your skin tone without something looking super cakey and then spot conceal. 
that's the way to go i feel like i can get on the runway with the skin <laughs> but yeah definitely go check this concealer out i'm gonna show you guys a close-up But yeah, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.